Even though Loconet has been around for about 25 years, I still would consider it to be the best layout control bus on the market, as to me it represents the best compromise between communication speed and reliability, simplicity of required hardware and related cost, message concept and structuring, and the open and expandable peer-to-peer -peer approach. One small element though that I think is rather weak is the Loconet fast clock. Luckily, the Loconet gateway we built in previous videos offers a simple bridge between Loconet and powerful cloud computing. So why don't we try to move the Loconet fast clock to the cloud and explore what we can use it for on our layout? Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use the Internet of Things along with sensors and microcontrollers to control a model railroad layout. So, get on board! The train is leaving the station! The Loconet fast clock implementation in the Digitrex command station is driven by a counter generating a click every 65.535 milliseconds. A regular minute therefore is around 915 clicks which are fed into registers for fraction of minutes, minutes, hours and days that count up and roll over. Those registers are located in slot number 123 in the command station as specified in the Loconet PE documentation. Unfortunately, there are a few problems with the implementation of the fast clock in the various throttles as well as in the command station that lead to errors when the counters are rolled over. A detailed description of these problems has been provided by Alex Shepard and Damien Philip as part of their efforts to provide an Arduino Loconet library. You can download their document from the GitHub link posted below. Besides the technical problems, the Loconet fast clock also only offers hours and minutes, but no date which may not impact your operating session, but in my opinion, it is a shortcoming compared to nowadays standards and best practices. Now that we have cloud computing power available just on the other side of the Loconet to MQTT gateway, I think it is a good idea to move the master clock to the cloud and then periodically update the Loconet fast clock from the cloud via the gateway. Doing so, we can make use of standard date and time formats and powerful programming languages to implement a fast clock that has more features and is more accurate than what the Digitrax command station offers. To make this work, we need three main modules. First, a clock generator that is called every second, reads the last time from memory, generates an updated time, stores it back to memory and sends it to the broker. Second, a data input module that allows for setting date, time and clock rate and third, one or several display modules that show the time in various styles as desired by the user. This brings a new element of Node-RED into play, data storage. Node-RED has three different storage categories, global, flow and context. Global data are variables that are available everywhere in the Node-RED application. Flow variables are only available in one single flow tab. This means you can have individual variables with the same name in two different flow tabs and they are different. Context variables finally are only valid in the function block they are used in, so they are ideal for storing values between individual executions of the same function. For our problem of storing date, time and clock rate, we use flow context variables, which are valid as long as we are in the same tab. You can read all the details in the node rate manual pages linked below. Let's get started with the fast clock generator part. I have uploaded all this code to the GitHub page linked below, so I am going through this fairly quickly. As seen, we need a ticker to generate clock pulses, a variable that holds the current time and a function to manipulate it. Once we have this, we then can periodically update the command station slot number 123 from node red and slot 123 becomes a slave clock. 
The first element is a ticker that gives the pulse every second to update the clock. The ticker feeds into a function that generates the LocoNet update command. I have left some commands in the code to make it easier to understand. Basically, the last time value and the clock rate settings are read from the flow context. In case the variable is not defined, a new variable is created and initialized. The function then adds a number of seconds according to the clock rate. So, if the clock rate is set to 4 for example, 4 seconds will be added to the last recorded time every tick. The result is stored back in the flow context. According to the LocoNet PE document, the master clock should send an update about every 70 to 100 seconds. I decided to send a fast clock message to LocoNet every 70 seconds using the LN out or LN in topic depending on the network mode settings of the gateway. This should prevent other devices from sending their own fast clock updates. On the LAN side, with its much higher bandwidth, however, we can send a one second ticker message to the broker. For this, I am using a new MQTT topic, fast clock, that is independent of the LocoNet messages. Now that we have a fast clock generator that keeps LocoNet and network time going, we need to have a mechanism to set date, time and clock rate. For this, we can use input elements from the Node-RED user interface components. There is a date picker and numeric input fields for hour, minute and clock rate. Please note that the hours are only adjusted by the time zone, but do not compensate for daylight savings time. Therefore, the fast clock time might be by one hour off. After setting those values, we store them in the flow storage area. All input elements are then assigned to the fast clock settings group in the user interface. As seen before, in the fast clock generator function, we read those values and construct or update the date-time variable, which then creates the output message to LocoNet and to the MQTT broker. Since every change in the setup requires that we send a fast clock update to LocoNet, we use the output of the storage function also to trigger the fast clock generator function so that it sends the update after any change of the settings. Finally, we monitor LocoNet for slot write messages to slot 123, meaning that another device is trying to set a new time. Since we made no dread the time master, we cannot tolerate such activity. Therefore, we immediately trigger sending out an update of our time. Of course, this leads to conflict if the sending time source has the same intention, but so far I did not run into this problem. If you followed the instructions to this point, your node red screen should look something like this. And with the debug node activated, you should see a fast clock message appear every second and the LocoNet out message every 70 seconds. Calling up the user interface, you should see a setup section for fast clock consisting of a date picker and input fields for hours, minutes and clock rate. Now the only missing part is a nice display on the mobile device to show the current fast clock time and to freeze and resume. If you watched video number 2 with the start stop button, this is familiar to you. Fast clock freeze is achieved by setting the clock rate to zero, so we can implement the button similar to the stop go button but this time we set the clock rate to zero to freeze or to the previous value to resume the fast clock. The button is then assigned to the fast clock display group in the user interface setup. If you have additional clock layouts, you just add one more button for each layout and attach it to the respective display group. To implement the display itself, we again use an HTML element and make it display the current date and time using a special font that looks like a 7 segment display. I found a nice date time display on the internet and posted the link below. In that article there is also a link to the 7 segment fonts. To make them work we need to download the display fonts and install them 
in the node red static directory. Make sure you install at least all fonts that are used in the HTML code. In the case of my Raspberry Pi installation, the path is home p dot node red static. This might be different in your case. Then we need to implement the HTML code so that it does not display the current system time but the time that comes in the fast clock MQTT message. To achieve this, we add a scope function to the HTML code that receives and decodes the MQTT payload. All the other functions are regular HTML and JavaScript to calculate and update the display. When done, the display element is then assigned to the fast clock display group and it should show up in the node red user interface. Looking good. In a larger layout room it might also be useful to have a real large fast clock display somewhere on the wall. Of course, with my Swiss background I'm thinking about one of those very typical Swiss railroad clocks. Why not display it on a large TV screen? Again, a quick internet search shows various options. I found one component that has an analog clock, even though not with the typical Swiss display, but similar enough and working. There are actually better ones, but so far I have not been able to make them work as fast clock. So, for the moment, I use this one with the fast clock time instead of the system time. This is again achieved with the scope function we have used before. Then we assign the analog clock display to a new section in the user interface so that it can be displayed independent of everything else. And we add a freeze resume button for this new section as well. All we need to do now is to open a browser on the smart TV and go to the UI web page of Node-RED and choose the new section. Here we go with a nice analog clock. And if you do not have a smart TV available, you can also use a regular computer and either display it there or use a Chromecast device and cast it to a dumb HDMI display either from your PC or your cell phone. Tons of possibilities. That's what I really like about this IoT technology. In the last step we are going to connect the fast clock output with the lightning of the layout room to simulate day and night straight from the Loconet fast clock. But wait, this video is already too long now, so I'm going to show this in a separate video sometimes in the future. Please stay tuned. So here is a summary of what we have done in this video. We decided to completely substitute the Loconet fast clock by a fast clock module running in Node-RED which gives us the possibility to include a date and use standard date time functions and formats. We built the Loconet generator and made it sending Loconet fast clock commands to the broker every 70 seconds for Loconet, every single second for LAN connected devices. We designed some simple input fields to set date, time and clock rate in the node red user interface. And finally, we designed two different clocks, one a small digital display for the cell phone and one an analog clock that can run on small or large displays, even on a big screen TV as public fast clock in the layout room. In a future video, I will show how to use the fast clock information to control the lightning of the layout room using some common home automation tools. As always, I posted a few links in the section below from where you can download the node red code and additional information I talked about in this video. If you like this video, stay tuned as more videos will come. In the meantime, click that like button below and subscribe to the IOTT channel to receive a notification when a new video becomes available. Finally, feel free to leave me a comment below with additional ideas or questions about topic. Thanks for watching.